are there specific things that, that we could do to uh, continue to um, inspire little girls to go into science? Because admittedly, it's been a long time since I was anything resembling a girl. The <laughs> malarian ducks disappeared a long time ago, you know, uh, the paramesonephric reduction several decades ago. So I don't really have a good concept of what it would take to inspire a little girl. When I was a boy, uh, you know, we had, there was animals and you cut things open and there was blood and, and, and lasers and, and rockets and spaceships and dinosaurs that would chew your face off, you know, and those kind of things inspired me as a little boy to find out more about it. Do we, is there a whole other set of, of items like that that appeals more to the little girls or, or is it just something you that... You know, I don't know a lot about that part of, of science outreach. Um, there are teachers I know uh, who uh, elementary school teachers who really do know a lot about how to interest little girls as well as little boys in science. But I, that's just not an area that I've spent a lot of time on. As far as interesting uh, young people, um, male or female, in critical thinking and skepticism in the sense of, you know, thinking about claims, um, uh, things like the junior skeptic, I think, are a great idea. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see more of that. Um, there, there can certainly be more than one publication of that sort. But you know, if you were interested as just a citizen in uh, interesting children in science, uh, girls or boys, um, there are volunteer opportunities at museums like this wonderful museum we're at here in, in Houston. Um, most larger communities have some sort of museum or science center or aquarium or botanical garden or something like that. Go talk to their people and ask them what they're doing for outreach to, to young, young people and kids. And uh, they would be delighted to have an extra pair of hands and feet to, to carry out these programs, because right. generally speaking, the ideas are there, but the delivery system isn't. Well, we should, As, we should mention that, that we are in the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and we are in one of the classrooms, mm -hmm. which I thought was appropriate for, for uh, uh, since you taught a class last night. I did. But uh, we've had uh, classrooms full of children coming in all morning, and I watched them file in, and of course half of them are, are little girls, and they're walking around looking at the exhibits, so they come in and their eyes are just yeah. enormous, yeah. and they're looking at all this stuff, and yeah. it seems like it's engaging them very well. Yeah, museums and science centers are, the whole informal science network is, is, is a great way to, to hook kids on science. But they got to come back, you know, they, it, yeah. it's got to be a repeated sort of thing. Uh, so I was wondering about uh, role models that you might have had when, when you were a little girl. Did, were, were there female scientists mm. that you looked up to and said, hey, that's what I want to do someday? Or did you have other aspirations? You know, I, I, got, I was interested in science. Um, I was interested in nature. I was interested in, in animals. Uh, from childhood on, but never really, you know, my mother didn't want us to have pets and we didn't go camping. I mean, I really didn't have very much of an opportunity to, to, to learn about nature, or do much observing. Uh, I had the classes in uh, elementary school and, and high school and junior high, but uh, nothing terribly exciting. Um, it wasn't until I got to the university level that I was really able to to kind of plunge into the uh, science classes that, that I was interested in taking. Um, I had wanted to be an anthropologist from a pretty young age, uh, from about, I don't know, 10 or 11 when my older sister brought back a bio, uh, an anthropology textbook from her university class. And I was looking at it and I, I saw the reconstructions of the uh, Peking Man and Java Man <laughs> and all these, these uh, hominid skulls here. We don't have one here. Um, and that I just, what is this called? This is called anthropology. Okay, I want to know about this. And so I ro enrolled in anthropology classes when I got to the university. This was at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And I did have a female role model there who was just fabulous, a woman named Nancy Lurie, who was actually a cultural anthropologist. Um, but uh, Nancy and, and actually the other cultural anthropologists at UWM at the time, and, and fortunately through most of my uh, undergraduate and graduate training, um, were very science-oriented. I mean, I understand that in subsequent decades, uh, uh, many cultural anthropologists have sort of swung over into this postmodernist stuff, which bears very little um, 
uh, resemblance to the kind of anthropology that I grew up with. But these were people who wanted to study human cultures from a scientific standpoint. And what was really interesting is that every single anthropology class I took, whether it was in physical or cultural or archaeology, and I don't remember, I only had one linguistics class, so I should be careful, but you know, the major subfields yeah. of anthropology, every single Blumen class I took started out with a big discourse on what science is and how you do science and how important science is as a way of knowing and how this is the really valid way to find out about human biology or human history or human cultures. And so I was really um, steeped in the idea of science from, from these social science courses, really. Interestingly enough, there, there's a, when I was in, in university, and that's 40 what, years ago, there was a sliding scale. Um, the harder sciences, uh, the physical sciences, spent the least amount of time uh, sp specifically delineating what science was and how you do it. The social sciences obsessed about it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I think was, was um, and, and I, I find that it's the chemists and the physicists who are the most clueless about the nature of science. Uh, just doing it doesn't necessarily mean that you've thought about it. And they're the ones who misuse terms like theory, law, and fact, and yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. But okay. I digress. <laughs> Been known to happen. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it, you had the bug early on, and then you were, you were being fed it in I had re vast I had amounts wonderful, once you got to yeah, university. I mean, I had great people who really, you know, who really did pound into me sure. the importance of science. And I know that science. there's a, a lot of people watching this today who are looking at you saying, that's my role model right there, including me. So <laughs> maybe we'll see if some good things come out of that. Mm -hmm.